What is up, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to One on One Playoff Edition. I am your co-host, Mike DeVito, here as always with nine-year NFL veteran and Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl champion. What we're hoping for again this year, Big Jeff Allen. This is a KC Sports Network podcast, and we're going to bring you all things Chiefs football from a player's perspective. Big Jeff, lots to talk about today. Before we get into it, our sponsor, Cookie Society Cookies, brother. We're coming up. We're still we're still in January. We still got the, the no January, January menu. Check them out. They ship nationwide. Check out the swag. The gear is fantastic. The candles, the cookies. Go get it. Cookiesociety.com. We know our cookies. You guys got to check it out. And, uh, you know, shout out to them for always sponsoring us. Big Jeff, we're grateful. All right, brother, we're on to it. So before we get into the exciting stuff, uh, let's, well, this is exciting stuff. Before we get into next week, let's recap sort of that, uh, that Steelers game. What did you think, man? When you look at that game, I mean, it was clear that Kansas City was favored going into it, obviously putting a whooping on the Steelers in the regular season. And then they just, they proved that they were obviously the better team. What was your break? I mean, we already broke down the game here at KC Sports Network, but any sort of things that you saw, any takeaways? Listen, man, I have my camera on for a reason. It's mm. goddamn hunting season. Mm-hmm. It's the playoffs. We know what's at stake. We know yeah. what the goal is. That's just a stepping stone. Kelsey spoke on it. Take it a week at a time. That's but right. The ultimate goal is, is Super Bowl or bust. So that's right. I was happy to see them come out and dominate. I'm going to be completely honest. I thought it'd be closer, but I'm not surprised yeah. at all, knowing what type of team that, that we have over here in Kansas City. Um, the players, everyone stepped up. Yeah, it was one of those things where we started out slow first quarter offensively, didn't score a touchdown. Defense held it down. Um, guys like Robinson, Pringle, of course, Patrick Mahomes, you know, Kelsey, Allegretti, right? Allegretti with the touchdown, <laughs> with and the he's touchdown, the big guy. But the star of the game for me was McKinnon. Yeah, the defense was McKinnon. Him stepping up, you know, with with Clyde being down and Daryl not being one hundred percent. Him stepping up and producing the way that he did mm-hmm. was amazing. Um, just to see how well he fits with the offense. Right. And, and I know Clyde has a lot of potential. He's a younger guy. Um, you know, he's the guy. But I think he fits this offense better than any back on the roster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he looks so smooth, has that burst, so efficient, patient, um, can set up his blockers, and can make big plays. So I, right. I, I was really, really encouraged to see that. And I spoke on it before the playoffs started. You know, playoff McKinnon's on the way. And I think this is the run. I think he's going to give us a hell of a run in the playoffs. He's going to give that boost that we need. And and it's going to be it's going to be one of those memorable, memorable runs. Right. And we know how important that position is, especially in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go to your point about the slow start, because one thing that I had said last week about the you know, about the Chiefs not getting the one seed and not getting that bye week was that it allowed them to get going in the playoffs right away, right? So there was a silver lining to the way that it played out with the Chiefs getting the two seed because they did start off slow. Mm -hmm. and uh, But they started off slow against a team that just couldn't compete with them anyway. So it was a perfect situation for them to get going, get the kinks out, get used to playoff speed. I think if you give them sort of you have that, that weird Denver game then a week off to sit on that Denver game. And now you're going to play your first playoff game against the Bills who just, you know, put a whooping on the Patriots coming into, you know, to Arrowhead. Uh, You know, if you were to have that slow start again against the Bills in the divisional round, that could be, that could be a bad thing, right? I mean, yeah, I I, I totally agree. Um, It was a good, a good tune up game. Um, Nick Wright on Fox Sports Network spoke on it. He said this was better than bye week. He said it going yeah. into the game. I was kind of confused by, you know, you want to get the rest. But coming off a game like we did against Denver, the previous two games, um, didn't play to the best of our abilities, started out slow, even in this Pittsburgh game. But just to tune things up and get that confidence and come off a good game leading up to a, a great matchup. I mean, this is going to be a tough one. We all know, you know, what they did to us week five in Kansas City. Um, but this mm-hmm. is a good football team. And to have that confidence and go out there and put up that many points and play that well defensively, heading into a, a gladiator, gladiator type matchup it is big. Yeah. So before we get in, that's exactly right. And before we get into Buffalo, uh, I just wanted to talk to you sort of more generally about this expanded playoff model and what your thoughts are, because people keep 
you know, there's a couple there's a couple issues involved here. One is that, you know, player safety, you added an extra mm-hmm. week to the season, you added another game in the playoffs, um, or another team into the playoffs. Uh, but when you look at over the past two years how this has played out, the seventh seed, I think, pretty consistently has gotten killed. I think there was <laughs> one or two outliers, maybe, yeah. but it's clear that the seventh seed, at least or, you know, from the stats that we have, from the games that we have, um, has not belonged in the playoffs. Right? I mean, it was clear that they were you know, the worst team. Um, what are your thoughts on this expanded model? Do you think this is, you know, it gave us a, a lot of football. I mean, it gave yeah. us, you know, a lot of playoff football, which I'm sure is good and obviously is making the NFL money. Uh, but is it a good thing for the game in general? Do you feel like it's added any value outside of money to uh, the game, you know, to the NFL playoffs. I do. I I don't like the extension of the season, adding a mm-hmm. 17th or a 17th game. I don't like that at all. But I do like adding an extra playoff team. The reason being is that one C gets the buy. I do think that that's yeah. the reward. I don't think two teams should get a buy. Yeah, I think right. the number one team, you earned that. You're number one for a reason. You deserve a break. The number two C, you know, <laughs> you got to yeah. play that first week. So I do appreciate that. Not, you know, even though we didn't get it, I, I like that model. Um, yeah. And yeah, we all know, like usually the underdog, especially in the wild card weekend, doesn't usually win. Right. You have the outliers. I mean, I think the Giants won the Super Bowl. Right. You know, yeah. as a wild card team, you know, I think they were seventh or whatever seat they were. Um, so it's possible. Everybody loves the underdog story. It's a good storyline, but realistically, it's not going to happen too often. Where right. A, a right. team like that makes a run. Yeah, I mean, it's been surprising that, you know, these past couple of years, how those low seeds have been really bad. I mean, it's not, you know, because I, when I was with the Jets, we were a lower seed. I don't remember, you know, what seed we were, but we were at the bottom and we made it to the AFC Championship. I mean, you talk about the Giants winning the Super Bowl being the lowest seed in the, yeah. in the NFC. But these past couple of years, especially with that additional, you know, number seven, it's been ugly. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but but no, I, I agree with you. If you're, you know, if you're the number one, Seed, you should get that bye week. That should be your sort of uh, – because uh, yes, that's hard to do. That's yeah. really hard to do, of course. All right, so people are talking about this game now against Buffalo as being the AFC championship game, right? Because whoever – the thought is whoever wins this game is probably going to win the following week in the AFC championship game. So obviously this is a – you know, power two powerhouse teams. They played against each other in the regular season. Let's talk about that, Jeff. Um, do you think that that makes much of a difference going into this game uh, for any team, but it's, you know specifically with the, the Chiefs and the, and the and Buffalo having played each other in the regular season? Does that does that add sort of any advantage or disadvantage or um, how do you? No, know that? not at all. If anything, it gives the team like Buffalo, you know, a disadvantage if they're taking yeah. that game and looking at it and thinking they have an advantage because they beat yeah. the hell out of us week five then they're coming in with the wrong mentality. These are two totally different teams, both teams. Right. Um, first off, defensively, we had so many starters out that first matchup. Chris Jones didn't play. Arguably be, arguably the best, if not most important player in our defense. Um, Melvin Ingram wasn't even on the team yet. Right. Charberry's war was out. Tons of defensive talent out. And then offensively, our identity is totally Plus different. Yeah. You know, We struggle early in the season um, with finding ourselves, trying to figure out, you know, how to take the, you know, the smaller plays, the dump offs, um, right. being more patient. And now we're doing that and and we're putting up 40 points <laughs> in right. the playoffs. So I'm excited to see. I, it's going to be a great game. Um, I think the two best quarterbacks left in the AFC are playing this weekend. That's why everyone's saying this is the AFC championship because right. this is a, a quarterback driven league. And usually the team with the best quarterback, you know, goes to the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's exactly right. And, um, I remember how, you know, that playing a team, because I, I, you know, I had the ability to play in how many playoff games, nine playoff games. So that was really, I was really lucky. Uh, And I remember playing the divisional round in 2010 against the Patriots, who four or five weeks earlier had beat us 43 to three or something. I mean, they had just killed us. This is when I was with the Jets in the regular Mm -hmm. season. Uh, And then, Three weeks later, we played them in the divisional round and just put the whooping on them. I mean, we've talked about this, but playoff football is just different. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a new season. It's a totally different season. And so 
What's nice is both teams can go back and look at sort of the individual guys that they went against, see what won, you know, so some defensive linemen, you can see if you landed any good pass rush moves, okay, let's go back to that. Let's try that again. And vice versa, this is what hurt us the first time, so be ready for this uh, on an individual level. But um, as far as, like you said, identity is totally different. Schemes are different. Um uh, you're not. I, I would. I would imagine that game, especially from week five, isn't even going to be in the scouting breakdown. No, uh, mean, just yeah. from an individual standpoint, like you know, the individual players and their skill sets. But schematically, these are two two different teams. They're not going to look too much at that game. They're going to look more so at the, the previous weeks and their matchups against other teams. Right. Right. Yeah. No. I I totally agree. And. Uh, uh, the way both these teams are playing right now, this is gonna this is playoff football. Like you yeah. said, I mean, you got two great quarterbacks. You got teams that just seem to be at, on all levels uh, playing at a high level, right? There's there's no really, I mean, there's there's no real weaknesses when you look at this, these two teams and say, oh yeah, that's a problem or this is a problem. Uh, like there is, especially with the other divisional game with uh, um, uh, with Cincinnati, Cincinnati and, and Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, you can tell there's some. You know, when you break down those two teams, there are weaknesses. Here, you got two really complete teams. Uh, I think it's a honestly, I mean, obviously, it's a massive benefit to be playing in Arrowhead. Yeah. Now, now, Jeff, you you've been there for the playoffs. What I, I never got to experience uh, a Chiefs playoff game at home in Arrowhead. Yeah. Talk to me about it, man. What man, is it? The atmosphere, it, <laughs> it is crazy. I'm talking yeah. about like, and it's cold. It's cold. It's co- it's cold as hell. But these fans are out here. I don't know what they're taking before the game, nonstop, <laughs> all out, loud as hell, um, yeah. going crazy. And, and we can feel that energy. Um, defensively, right. I know our defense feeds on that energy. It makes it tough for the opposing offense. And you got to make plays. Like, if you have absolutely no chance winning an arrowhead, if you start slow. Right. If no, you that's start slow. So I'm looking I'm, – I'm, I really hope that we come out, start fast offensively. The defense gets some stops early. Because right. if that happens, then the crowd is going to go even crazier and it's going to be damn near impossible. Impossible. I mean, I, I just I, – I can't – you know, I recall times being on defense during the regular season, week two or week three, and and how loud that stadium gets where you can feel the ground shaking. And just the trouble that that gave offenses, there's this, it's impossible to communicate effectively – in that sort of atmosphere. And so the advantage that Arrowhead is to Kansas City is huge. And this is something, if I'm correct, that wasn't the case the last time these two teams played, right? It's like, I believe they were in Buffalo, right? No, no, it was in Kansas City. Oh, it was in Kansas City. It was in Kansas City, but they jumped out on us so fast. Okay. I mean, it was one of those games where it was like going into half, it was like, man. uh, (laughs) So it's tough for a crowd to get into it when you don't have the momentum. Exactly. Um, we and we have a great fan base, but anytime a team's putting a whooping on you like that, it's tough to cheer for. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, no. So we were able to get the slow start out week one. Now the guys are going. Uh, our producer Tucker brought up an interesting point about Pat Mahomes. That was his first wild card game in his, you know, over the, you know, in his tenure as as quarterback. It's just amazing what he's. I mean, obviously. You know, we see it every week, but it's amazing what he's been able to get done and get done so early in his career where he hasn't even, you know, his teams haven't even played in the wild card. And if the rules were the same, he wouldn't have played this year either, right? I mean, he got, they got the two seeds. So it's just amazing. He um, is. Oh, he's, man. he's seven and two in the playoffs. This is a mind boggling stat. He's seven and two in the playoffs. His two losses came against the GOAT, Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. So if he didn't exist, we could be arguing that he's he's undefeated in the playoffs. This is his first wild card matchup. Not only that, this is his first. He, he's not, not even his first. He's never had an away game in the playoffs that wasn't the Super Bowl. He's played <sighs> every single playoff game at home that wasn't the Super Bowl. So, I mean, you just look at this kid's career, his resume, his stats. Even starting out slow yesterday, he was 6 for 12, right. 45 yards, one interception, and no one panicked. Everyone right. knew. Like, okay, you know, after that turnover, after that fumble where, you know, T.J. Watt scored, I was like, okay, now they're going to wake up now. Right. And he went on a run into the game, 30 for 39, 404 yards, five touchdowns. I'm mm-hmm. talking all-time historic playoff performance. And, and it's just none of it's surprising. No one talks yeah. about it. 
Right. That's the crazy part about it. It's it's such it's such the norm for him to do these ridiculous things that it's like okay, that's just Patrick. Ah, uh, Jeff. I mean, uh, teams can be up twenty one points, twenty four points, twenty eight points, and I remember this happened a couple of times. And being like, oh, I'm not too nervous about it. You know, what <laughs> other teams are you rooting for? Well, you're up twenty three touchdowns. It's over. Your that other team's done. Well, Kansas City. They could score 21 points in, in a minute and a half. You he know, started, he threw, know. what was it? It was like 11 minutes, man. Like he threw, I don't know. I'm, it's crazy. Unbelievable. Five I, touchdowns I, in 11 minutes. I, I'd love to see sort of what the, 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 they need to study, you know, what he, what he brings. Obviously there's the intangible stuff, but like when it comes to drafting quarterbacks, if I was another team, I'd be trying to figure out, okay, what were the metrics? What did they see in him? You know, how can we, you know, who, who comes close to replicating this? Because when you look at the quarterbacks that came out this year uh, and that had to play significant amounts, you know, New England with Mac Jones, the Jets with Zach Wilson. I mean, these guys come out and they start young and they're just not even close. Now, you know, granted, Pat Mahomes had one year under Alex Smith, which is going to help him learn. But even still, I mean, I think if you would have given him the ball right away, he still it, was just going to it, be a it, – It's the perfect storm. It, it, it's like, you know those guys that are Hall of Fame guys that that have God-given talent? Right. Like, a lot of guys in the NFL have God-given talent. But there's those guys that have the talent that don't put in the work. This guy right. has the talent, puts in the work, one of the smartest right. guys I've ever been around, one of the most humble guys, which is most important, yeah. which gives him that balance. Right. And just having that – just the environment that he's in, being in yeah. Kansas City, being with the Hall of Fame coach – I'm right. talking about he couldn't have asked for the perfect pairing. Like, it's the best possible matchup between coach and quarterback, probably in NFL history. Right. Like, I know, you know, you have Belichick and Brady, and, and they went on their run. But these guys and, and Andy Reid's genius on offense and his creativity and right. what he does and, and his belief in, in Patrick and Patrick, you know, just slinging that thing. It's just – and then having Tyreek, having a guy that just goes – Yeah, in, like, all the famers. All, all of these things that, that – all came together. They all work perfectly. Right. So we're seeing the perfect storm right now, and we're beneficiaries of it as Kansas City Chiefs fans. Right. And this is the golden era. I mean, we're going to constantly be in it. We're going to always be in the in the championship conversation. There's right. always going to be a chance to win a Super Bowl, and this year is no different. It's going to be yeah. like this for a long time. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's an interesting point you brought up about sort of his humility because I had the opportunity right after I retired to go down – uh, when you guys, I, well, I, saw, I saw you down there when you guys came in to play New England. You played, yeah. you played at New England like four years in a row. So I would, you know, I'm up here in Maine and I would come down and visit you guys and give the, the chapel before the game, Saturday night before the game when you guys played in New England. And I remember it was at the beginning of, of Pat's career and uh, talking to Sherman and Sherman be like, you're really, you got to meet him. He's, he, uh, he doesn't seem like a quarterback. Like you would never realize uh, he was a quarterback, right? Because I've been around Alex Smith. Mark Sanchez, Brett Favre, um, you know, all these, even Tebow. I've been around all these different guys. You, those guys know their quarterbacks, and you could tell when you're around them that there's a sort of – Just the way they carry themselves. Yeah, the yeah. It's like it's a quarterback. You know yeah. it's a But Mahomes, it wasn't like that. He was like one of the guys. Like he would like – it would be like sitting down at the O-line or D-line table, one of the guys. I mean, he really was incredibly humble. And so you combine that with his natural talents and his work ethic – and you're right. I mean, it's it's an instant Hall of Famer, um, and so it's just it's just fun to see. Uh, and then just the continued reminder that he's going to be, you know, God willing, leading the charge there in Kansas City with Andy Reid for the he's, next however long. He's so young, right? He signed a ten year contract, and at the end of that contract, he's still going to be in the prime of his career. Exactly. Think about that. Like that, that is nuts. So unbelievable. This guy has a bright future. Kansas City has a bright future. I mean, he's going to be here for a long time. Guys are going to move around, but as long as he's that cornerstone, yeah, it's it's always going to be this, right? And you know, the game is so much different than we were put when we were there, Jeff. I mean, there are no more two a days. There are no more um, uh, uh, really crazy heavy hitting practices and pads all the way into yeah. December. And so the, it really is primed for these guys and the way they're taking care of player safety on taking, the field now. And the way guys are taking care of themselves indiv exactly. individually. I mean, there's definitely more like, even from when I first came in the league, like, right. you know, guys were taking care of themselves, but now it's more, it's more scientific. Right. There's holistic approaches. Exactly. Guys are more guys than ever have, you know, personal trainers in the off season. Exactly. Personal chefs. 
guys are really buying into, you know, taking care of themselves because they see guys like Tom Brady playing at 44 right. and leading the league in passing and things like that. And it's not by mistake. It's right. it's what he does day to day, um, especially playing a position like quarterback. Like as long as you do the things you're supposed to do, you can play for a long time. Exactly. No, that's exactly right. And and yeah, it's it, the, the league is set up now for you to do that. Whereas like when we first started, that it was a lot more difficult to go over 10 years. You know? it, was yeah, like just, it was, was too much of a grind. Your body was going to break down eventually. Like, so. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's a great thing to reflect on. All right. So we got Buffalo this week, divisional round. Everything gets amplified even more. There's more media. There's more attention to the games. Obviously, we're getting closer and closer to that Super Bowl. Big Jeff, let's bring it back next week with a W, talking about this AFC Championship game and then getting ready for the Super Bowl, brother. But Chiefs Kingdom, thank you for tuning in to another episode of One on One. We will see you next week after this win. Big Jeff, have a great week, brother. And we'll see you. We'll see you next week, man. Go Chiefs. Go hunt some goddamn buffalo. Let's get it, baby. <laughs>